Hello everyone. Welcome to the Union Pacific Railroad Evanston Subdivision in HO scale. My name is Daryl Cruz, owner and builder of the layout and your host for episode 11 of season 2023. Episode 11 is the Curvo Bridge episode, at least uh, the first of which is probably going to be a few more. But I actually began work on putting in the actual Curvo Bridge. Now, as you can see here, the bridge is not in. This is how it looked before I got started. I've been using just the plywood bridge going over. This is the uh, original main line going over the modern main line at Curvo and uh, this week I finally got to uh, the point where I cut out the plywood and put in the Curvo bridge. Now I'm using a micro engineering 50 foot uh, deck girder bridges and I built these uh, in end scale uh, but they were 80 inches excuse me 80 feet not 50 feet these are 50 foot bridges and the first thing I did after I had built them is kind of laid them out. I needed to figure out exactly where these are going to go so I knew exactly where to cut the plywood. And uh, so I was kind of just moving things around. Uh, Scott Chaffield put the little pencil mark there where he thought the uh, middle of the bridge should go. But I wanted the bridge to cross exactly over the lower main line so where this uh, middle joint here needed to go exactly over top of the uh, main line uh, the modern main line underneath it uh, the reason why that needed to be exact is so that the girder uh, the box girder uh, pier that I'm going to scratch build I want to make sure that it uh, had clearance and would be able to clear the trains going under the bridge. So I want to make sure I was exact as possible. Uh, so I did kind of went back and forth. I uh, uh, used my camera. The camera's got this little um, leveling uh, device. So you can't see it right now, but as I was looking, uh, I had this little uh, orange cross that would light up when I had it exactly level. So the first thing I did is I put a pencil on top there and try to uh, make sure that it was right on top. But then I figured out that I actually wanted to have a curved piece of track on there. So I took a, a piece of uh, flex track that I had laying around. And I um, uh, curved it exactly as like the curve underneath it. And then I put that on top. So uh, I figured out the pencil wouldn't work. I needed to get an actual curved piece on there now again my camera has this leveling thing if I have the camera exactly level it will uh, light up this uh, little cross the orange cross on the screen so I was kind of using that to make sure I had the camera level and I had the uh, track exactly on top so it would be centered so once I was confident that I had it exactly where it needed to go uh, between, so it's exactly on top of the bottom track. Then I looked at the middle here, and I made adjustments to make sure that this was, in fact, uh, exactly crossing uh, back and forth, uh, crossing each other. Again, I want to make sure this middle section cross. This is where the box girder scratch-built pier has to go. And so I want to make sure... Uh, that it was exactly where it needed to go. Here's a picture of it, by the way, of the scratch-built one. Now, once I had exactly where it's supposed to go, I uh, put in some pencil marks here. I'm kind of making some adjustments here because I wanted it to kind of uh, coincide with the actual uh, bridge there so that it would line up properly. And... Then I kind of made the marks over here also. So that kind of gave me a, a good idea exactly where the plywood needed to be cut. 
All right, now here again I have the uh, four 50-foot bridge pieces. Now, the actual on the prototype is going to be a little bit longer than this. But again, this is uh, kind of scaled down a little bit uh, between the two. One thing I needed to do then next was uh, decide about the piers and where the piers were going to go in. I was first of all I needed to figure out the how wide the pier needed to be because the kit that I was using wasn't exactly the right size. So I looked at all these pictures. I can't actually get out there and measure it. So I looked at all these pictures and I finally came to the conclusion that the piers were the same width as the bridge deck. Because here you're looking pretty much straight on and you can't see you can't see the bridge deck. <clears throat> so I concluded here's where one of the bridge piers is going to go. And so I concluded that uh, it needed to be the same width. Now they have the standard width right there which is going to be too wide but then they do have uh, markings so that you can cut the size of the pier down. So the uh, actual uh, if I did the actual size the size out, out of the box is going to be too wide because that extends over. If I did the where the marking is and cut exactly where the the mark is there it's going to be too narrow. So I determined that it's going to have to be just a little bit past a little bit wider than where they have it cut. So I couldn't use the pre-cut space. It's going to have to be just a little bit wider and so basically what I did is I held it in place and then I used my X-Acto knife to make a little cut. Now some of these I did make them shorter already. Two of them as you can see. And this one here you can see where I put the little cut there. So that is where the uh, that's going to be the width there. So you can kind of see how it lines up. So that's where I want to scribe it. And that's the width I've decided to go with. As you can see, my table's really messy. That's really bad. That's bad. I, I kind of got uh, disgusted with, with myself. And before I did the next step, I cleaned it off a little bit. All right, then now to make sure I got the cut not only the right width but to make sure that it was the right angle I took a, a piece to, uh, so this is two pieces and I kind of clamped them together so it's at the mark and then I use my uh, utility knife here to slice down the middle so I use the in order to get the angle correct I made sure here kind of checking to see how it's gonna look make sure it was the right width so I clamped the two of the pieces together at the mark so that I would get the cut exactly in the right spot, but then also the right angle. All right, so here you can see I have them all cut to the right width, and I have them cut a little bit shorter also because as out of the box they're way too tall. Uh, so I was pretty happy with uh, where the size was going to be. Now they have this cap to put on top. Um, for the top of the pier, but here you can kind of see what a, how it looks like on the box. Uh, but I didn't want that cap on there. If you notice, the piers do not have anything like that. They're just flat on top. Um, so I decided not to use that. Here you can see the other, another picture of it. Um, and you can kind of see the width is starting to look right. Uh, so I just put the flat piece of uh, a plastic on top there. So that was provided in the kit. You could do it either way. All right, so this is how it's going to look, hopefully. Do you notice I do have the bridge shoes glued onto the, the bridge also. So you can kind of, I think it uh, comes out to be the right, the right size, same size as the prototype. 
Now all these piers, I will probably, before I paint them and actually glue them down, I'll probably sand them on the corners to kind of make them more rounded and not so sharp on the corners that could, will, will uh, fit the prototype pr pretty well. And I also will use some plastic filler to uh, hide some seams. So I'll put the plastic filler in there first and then sand it. Now I had a bit of, I was trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to get these things in place? And I decided I, I needed something that was stable and sturdy. And, uh, uh, and I also wanted to make sure that I uh, uh, got this uh, box girder in the right place as well. Um, so I decided I was going to wait on the box girder since I didn't have them yet. I'm still waiting for them to come in. And I decided for the two middle pieces where that box girder is going to go, I decided I'm going to kind of glue them together so that they're one rigid piece. And that way I can do the box girder scratch building uh, on a bridge that's already, you know, where it's supposed to be, and I don't have to worry about the height of it. So I took a, pe a couple pieces of uh, plastic from the kit, just cut them out so that they would fit in there, and then I glued them in there on uh, both sides, and that's going to go then right here uh, between these two. And I also uh, cut out some uh, uh, scrap pieces of lumber and uh, glued them in place so that the piers had uh, a place, a stable place and a level place to uh, to be glued down so that it would be in the right spot. Now all this is being done with, uh, as you can see, the plywood still in place there. So I'm just kind of trying to get things cut to the right size, get things in the right spot. Um, one thing I want to do to kind of figure out the height of the pier it's still too tall here so I put it on this level here and then I measured how to how too tall it was and then I marked that amount uh, on here and then I cut the pier to match it actually it turned out I cut too much but uh, it's easy to shim up and not uh, shim down uh, now for the abutments uh, they have this little back plate here that I need to decide what height to put it. Um, and I decided to go ahead and make it a little bit tall, uh, shorter. This is going to be covered up with ballast, so I wasn't too concerned. But I definitely didn't want it sticking up too high. Uh, so I decided where it was supposed to go. And then once I had that glued to the abutment, then I glued the whole piece then to the wood. Now you can see I did finally cut the wood out. And then I glued the abutment to the plywood and made sure with a level there that it was exactly even. And I uh, kind of finally put the track back in uh, where it was supposed to go. And then I finally also put in the um, retaining walls next to the abutments. Uh, so this is kind of uh, how it looks. So, so far I think it's turned out pretty good. Uh, still have a lot to do. I'm going to try and make sure the track is centered exactly where it's supposed to go. Uh, nothing is glued down yet except for the abutments and the retaining walls. They are all glued in. Now on that retaining wall there, I'm going to put in some more plastic filler and sand that down a little bit. Kind of get rid of some of the seams, sand the uh, piers down a little bit. Same thing here on the... Uh, on the retaining wall, I'm going to kind of sand that down. Uh, and then, uh, of course, everything, again, the, none of the bridge sections are glued down. The piers are not glued down. The track is not attached. Um, and, of course, I have the uh, center uh, pier to build with the uh, box girders and make sure I get that in and it clears everything. So still a lot to do. Um, and, of course, the scenery has to go in as well. Uh, so I'm definitely looking forward to uh, uh, continuing work on this. It is a work in progress. I uh, would like to hear any suggestions that you have, something I may have missed. Uh, that would be uh, good to hear. Uh, so uh, 
a lot of changes can still be made, but I'm pretty happy with the way things uh, look so far. I think it is going to be a really good representation of the actual Kerrville uh, crossing. And here you can see a stack train going through. I wanted to do a stack train because uh, that's the highest uh, train. As you can see, there is uh, quite a bit of clearance under there. Uh, so uh, definitely going to have room to put the box girder pier there in the middle. And I'm going to have to probably do uh, some scratch-built piers. We'll probably build a form out of styrene and then pour plaster in the form for the uh, two small piers that the uh, box girder support uh, uses in the middle. Uh, this definitely is uh, a cool spot. Uh, this is typically what you will see uh, on a model train layout, two trains crossing over each other. But in this case, it actually is a there actually is a prototype for it. Uh, two main lines crossing each other. The original main line on top. And then the modern main line on the bottom. So going to do some more work here. I still have some retaining walls to put on the tunnel portals. And then, of course, the plaster would need to go in. Wanted to do all that before I painted anything as far as the bridge and piers go. And then um, once I get the plaster in and get it painted and ground foam and so forth, then I'll go ahead and paint the uh, piers, the bridge, probably weather it quite a bit uh, to match. Uh, so, but anyway, I'm really happy with how things are looking so far. Definitely appreciate seeing any of your uh, comments and uh, definitely like and subscribe and comment and uh, become a member. That would be awesome. Uh, Thanks so much, everyone, for watching. More progress in the weeks to come. Take care, everybody. Have a great week.